Um, so to begin with, the three main things that Google Apps brings to classrooms are um, efficiency, uh, it increases collaboration, and then it also increases engagement of students. And as we go through the 32 different ways, you'll see um, these three things come up again and again. Either it's going to increase the efficiency of, of a teacher practice or teacher process, um, it'll help uh, increase or support collaboration among teachers, and lastly, it could help uh, support engagement of students. Okay. So as you're all familiar with, these are the tools that come with Google Apps for Education, Gmail, Talk, Groups, Calendar, Docs, Sites, Video. Um, and I'm going to go through several of these tools and talk about applications um, within each of them. So the first that I'm going to talk about is Google Docs. And Google Docs is really the heart and soul of Google Apps for Education. Of, of all the tools, the, this is the tool that um, has the, the most incredible benefits um, for educators. And my absolutely favorite use case is probably the simplest. And that's just using a Google Doc to collaborate on lesson planning. Um, you know, as educators, we all want to collaborate, but it can be really hard given the confines of the, of the school day and given the structure of a school where you're all in your own individual classroom. And Google Docs allows you to, uh, allows you to uh, collaborate. So if I go here to this, um, to this lesson plan, let's see if I can pull it up. Um, and I look, uh, right now I, I, um, I don't have, I could, I could be typing, and at the same time, if I have a, a colleague come into this lesson plan, she could be typing or he could be typing at the same time. And when we talk about collaboration, we're, th we're talking about real-time collaboration, where you can see every single letter that your colleague has typed as they type it. Um, you could also write comments, as you can see the comments here, about, about the, the lesson. Um, so this is, again, like the simplest use case, but the one that I think has the, the, the biggest benefits for education. And um, I'm going to come back to this one in a little bit when my colleagues on it as well to just show you the, the power of these collaboration tools. Um, another great way to use Google Apps is for staff meeting or grade level meeting notes. So I know for my grade level meeting, we used to have to write the meeting notes and then photocopy it and then put it in the mailbox of all of our colleagues as well as the principal. Um, and this, it wasn't a good use of time and it, and it wasted paper. Instead, you can just have a running Google Doc and every week write the meeting notes in there and then share them out with your colleagues. Um, another way is using the Google Docs list as a shared lesson repository. So if I go here, here we see a Google Docs list. You could create collections for your fourth grade team. And then you could share out your lesson plans or um, other curricular resources with that team. Um, and you could have it housed just in your Google Docs list. So this can become like a virtual uh, intranet. Um, another one of my favorite ways that Google Apps is being used is to change the writing process. So if we look here, we're looking right now at a fairy tale that was written by some third graders, Molly and An. And um, in the traditional model of writing, where we're teaching writing, a teacher just gets what we see right now, grades it, and then gives it back to them. They might do their revisions, and then they grade it again. But that's about all a teacher gets. With Google Docs, you have the revision history. Um, but to dive right back in, what we're looking at is a, a fairy tale that was written by two third graders. And um, the traditional model, all, you, all the teacher sees is the end product that these students created. But with Google Docs, you can see the entire history of the document. So every time anyone touched this document, um, you're able to see it. So we can start here, and we see Molly began writing the fairy tale at, on October 12th at 11.53 AM, and she wrote some gibberish. And then it looks like Molly went back in later that day, and she was really inspired, and she wrote a lot. <laughs> um, and then we go here, and it looks like Aunt contributed well, she contributed a little bit. She contributed her name, and she changed the spelling of meow. So all of a sudden, a teacher has insight into the, the entire writing process that the students have engaged in. And the teacher can hold uh, students appropriately accountable if they're doing collaborative work. A teacher, you could also imagine going back into a document and finding gems that a student wrote, but that maybe they went over in another draft. Um, so the, this revision history is, is um, it's a very powerful feature and probably the most, one of the most favorite features of teachers and the least favorite features 
of students. Um, another thing that you can do with the Google Doc is because you can share it out, you could share this doc not just with the, with the students that are working on it collaboratively, but you could also share it with parents so that they become involved in the writing process as well. And so that it's not just the dynamic of teacher-student, but rather it's a collaborative process and you can bring um, other students into it or parents into it as well. And then finally, when the student is done with this, it's very easy to publish. You could publish this out onto a Google site or you could just share it out with the whole class. And knowing that their document is going to be shared and read is uh, extremely motivating for students. Um, there's a case study that I included here that goes into more depth on um, how to use Google Docs to improve the writing process. Another way that Google Docs can be used is uh, for reading response journals. So I remember when I was a teacher lugging composition notebooks that looked exactly like the one that you see in the picture there uh, every weekend into my car. And there was 32 of them, and it took an enormous amount of time to go through. And if I didn't write the comments on them and hand them back right away, the students wouldn't read in, uh, for that week. So being able to just go into a Google Doc and write students' comments on their reading on an ongoing basis um, can really make that process easier. Another way is um, being able to translate letters home for parents. So um, this is a letter that it, for the beginning of the year that a teacher wrote. And, um, and if you have any English language learners, you're going to want to send that letter home in their, in, in their native language. So with Google Docs, it's as easy as going to, um, to the translate document, which this is actually, looks like this one is. So here's the parent letter. And I'm going to Tools, and I go Translate Document. And as you can see, we have a ton of different languages that you can choose from. So many of the languages that your students might speak could be covered. Um, so we'll just we'll translate it into Greek. I haven't translated something into Greek before, so I'll do that. And voila, you have a translated Greek letter of your for for your students. And it's not going to be perfect. It's 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 I. I wish I could read this letter. Um, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be enough to get over the, the language barrier. Um, it'll be enough for the parents to be able, able to understand what you're trying to communicate and enough for the teacher to feel comfortable sending these letters home um, to, to, their, to their parents. Another way is um, using a Google spreadsheet to track student homework. So basically what this is is taking the, the sticker star chart that, that teachers have on their wall to track homework and putting it onto an online format. And what this teacher has done here is they've given each student an anonymous an, a number to anonymize them. And then they've shared the spreadsheet out with the parents, all the whole class. And so the student, the parent whose student is number five can look and say, oh, it looks like my, my student didn't do their homework for the last three days. Um, and they're able to get that information on an ongoing basis. So it allows, it increases the amount of communication that parents and teachers can have. Another way is using it for sign-up sheets. I know that this was always a, a big headache when I was in the classroom trying to schedule my, my 32 parents into all the time slots. Um, using a Google spreadsheet, you can share a spreadsheet with them with the different times, and parents can come in and sign up for a time that works from them. If that time is already taken, as you can see, Tuesday 1 o'clock is already taken by Becky Coleman, then, um, then they'll have to sign up for another time. So it's just an easy way to, to get parents to sign up. Um, another great way is uh, using Google Docs, using the spreadsheet specifically for, uh, for a science experiment. So this example is actually taken from a class in Illinois. And this class was doing an experiment on the impact or the effect of acid and normal rain on the height of plants and then also on uh, the number of leaves that plants would have. And what in the traditional model, the traditional schooling model, this group of students right here would write their, write their findings, collect their data in a composition notebook. And then at the end, they would graph their individual findings. Instead, what this teacher did was have the entire class collect the data through a Google form. And that form is shown right here. So all of the students were using the same form. So across the multiple groups and the multiple classrooms, all that data was collected in one source. So already we're seeing a difference between the old model and the new model. We have the students are working with a lot more data um, th than they would have been. And that data is collected here from the Google form. 
Um, then this teacher decided to take it one step further. So already the teacher has, has given students access to more data. The teacher decided to insert something that we call a motion uh, graph. And that's a gadget, which is, if you go here, and this is the gadget that they added to the spreadsheet. And what a motion graph allows you to do was, is analyze five variables at the same time. So what the teacher and the students wanted to analyze was what was the impact on the plant's height with acid versus normal rain. And we also wanted to look at the number of leaves. So the size of the circle is going to grow as the number of leaves grow. And as the plant grows across time, uh, we'll see the, the graph go up. So let's press play and see what happens. So as you can see with the normal plant, it's getting taller, and also the number of leaves are growing. And then the plant that had acid rain, it grew a little bit. The leaves, number of leaves doesn't really increase, and then ultimately it dies. So again, this is one of the ways in which Google Apps is, is being used. Um, and it's also one of the ways that you're seeing our engineers and our product managers thinking about these applications differently, that they're finding some really neat ways um, to, 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 to add features into these products that, that are useful to our customers. Um, another way that we're seeing it being used is through uh, a flashcard center. So this is another gadget. This is through spreadsheets. They inserted a gadget. And there's actually a flashcard gadget. So in lower elementary classrooms, we're seeing teachers create a, a center with computers in which they have students work um, on flashcards. Um, I've included here some ways for you to try it. So you can, you can um, play around with this. And also, if you want to learn more, I've included a link to the Google Apps for Education Training Center to learn more about Google Docs and how to do the different things that I showed you. So going into uh, the next application, this is Google Forms, um, a, another favorite application um, on Google, Google Apps. Um, if you could please go to this Bitly, actually not this Bitly link, sorry. If you could go to um, Angels, so you see a bunch of responses here. And the other thing that I wanted to point out is that it has a timestamp. Another thing that you can do require, wow, another thing that you can do um, when you're doing a Google Form is you could require that there's a name stamp. So if you have a Google Apps for Education um, domain, then everyone, you can require that everyone's um, name from their email address be stamped onto that as well. So you would see my name, for instance, Siglitz, um, associated with, with this first one. Um, so we look here, and we just collected 58 responses in the last few seconds. And I have all of that data here, which I could analyze, I could make graphs with, I could do a lot of things with. And it was very, very easy for me to do and collect, and then now have um, 64 responses. Um, and so automatically, you're, 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 if you haven't seen the Google Forms before, your mind is probably turning and thinking about all the different ways that this could be used in the classroom. And there are so many ways. And I'm just going to touch on a few of them. Um, but you'll probably think of many more on your own. So one of the ways is using this as a formative or summative assessment. So if you have a one-to-one -one program, or if you have smartphones in your classroom, or um, tablets in your classroom, you can use a Google Form to give students a pre-assessment. So see what they know uh, about what you're teaching them that day. Um, and then at the end of the day, at the end of the lesson, you can see what they learned. Um, and it's a really easy way to collect that data. You don't have to enter it in. You can just analyze it right there. Um, another way is uh, using it to collect um, interest surveys. So what are students' strengths or weaknesses, or what are they interested in? Um, and you can do that just through using a Google Form. Um, another way in which you could use a Google Form is for observation forms. So this is an example of a principal teacher observation form where a principal is walking from class to class and collecting data on the, on, on the teacher. Um, you could also use this for students. So you could have the form so that you can observe different behaviors that a student is doing and collect that information in a really easy way into the Google form. Online reading records. Um, again, like it's just thinking about all the different pa paper processes that, a, that, that, that you as a teacher have in your day, or you as an administrator have. And, and thinking about ways to make your life easier by, by using a Google Form. And um, online reading, uh, reading records is a, is, is a simple way. It's a 
simple paper that students hand in every day or every week, and you could make that easier just by having it collected through a Google form. Um, tracking discipline referrals. Um, many schools use half sheets of paper to collect discipline referrals, and you have to go to the office and fill it out. Instead, you, teachers at a school could just use a Google form and have all that data captured centrally in one spreadsheet. And that makes it much easier to, to look at it throughout the day. If there's one particular student that's particularly challenging, a teacher could go in and see if he's been referred by another teacher. Um, it's just another easy way to, to make that process um, smoother. Um, several other ways you can collect information from parents or teachers. You could use it for spelling tests or multiplication tests. Um, and you could also use it to collect science data. If you're already a pro at using Google Forms, uh, one way that you can make the forms even better would be to add some app scripts to the form. And you could do things like make um, self-grading uh, self -grading quizzes or having an automated response come when you, sign up, when you sign up for a form. So that's for those of you that are already very familiar with Google, Google Forms. You can take it even one step further. Um, and I've attached here on the presentation um, a link for an introduction to Google Forms webinar and then also an advanced Google Forms webinar and then also a link to our training center. Google Calendar. Okay, so this is another one of our applications that I'm going to go to our calendar and I'm going to take off all of these. So what we see right now is um, my basic calendar. This is for this demo right now. I'm Jeff at C1 USD. Um, and this teacher, Jeff, you can see all of his uh, classes that he's set up. This is his school calendar. Um, but Jeff has more going on with his life than just what's going on at school. So Jeff can also have a personal calendar. And um, Jeff will, could make this calendar public so that everyone else can see it. So you can see if Jeff's in English class or math class or has lunch. But perhaps he doesn't want everyone to know that he goes to the gym at, at 6.30 in the morning or is going to Jane's baby shower. Um, and that calendar he can keep private. You could also overlay your colleague's calendar, so Ms. Franklin's calendar or Ms. Smith's calendar. And you could use that to see when you can schedule events. So you can see that Ms. Smith is free during this time. And you could um, schedule a, a meeting. Um, you can also overlay um, a, a standards map. So you could ha here we have um, standards mapping at the very top. And you can see that these are the standards that you have to cover. This could be shared out district-wide or shared out as a school or shared out as a grade level. And you can even, within calendar, you can attach things to a calendar invite. So you could attach what those standards look like, an example of those standards, or an example of the lesson plans that you're teaching. Um, and that's just by adding an attachment here. Um, you can also use it for shared resources, like the library. So here, what this school has done is they've given a calendar to the library. And you can just schedule a meeting, essentially, with the library in order to schedule time with the library. You could also use it for laptop carts um, in order to check out laptop carts. And there's also just some fun calendars that are down here. So I saw that there was at least two Giants fans that were on this webinar. So those Giants, those two Giants fans, you could have right here. And this is pulling information from the web and putting it into, into the calendar. So there's, you know, I, if we look at Browse Interesting Calendars, um, whatever your favorite baseball team was, you could, you could add it there. Um, or holidays. OK, going back to calendar, um, we can also add US holidays here and see that it was Mother's Day. Um, so that's calendar. Let me go back over here. Um, and there's more information that I've attached here in the training center that you can go back to use to use the calendar. Um, the next app that I want to talk about is Gmail. And their Gmail here is a Gmail account. It can do all the normal things that you would expect Gmail to do. But it also has a couple of really neat applications that I want to show you. One of them is Google, uh, is Gmail Labs. So if I go here and I go to Labs, so I'm going to show you a couple of my favorites. 
Um, one of my favorites is undo send right here. So let's say you send an email and you realize that you spelled the person's name wrong or you realize that you forgot to attach something. You have a few seconds to um, undo send. So make it so that it wasn't sent. That's one nice lab feature. Um, there's a feature called, um, another nice one is Yelp, which is actually less relevant for the classroom, but it is relevant to make sure that, that you like the restaurants that you're going to. So uh, if somebody sends you a dinner invitation, you can see what the rating of the restaurant was using the, the Yelp preview in mail um, feature. But the one that I really want to talk about that is most important for classrooms is message translation. And I see that it is already enabled. So it's already enabled. I'm going to go back to my inbox um, right here. And let's say now I get a letter from a parent, um, and the letter is in Spanish. Because I've enabled message translation, Gmail knows that this letter is in Spanish. And right there within the body of the email, I can have this letter email translated. And again, the translation may not be perfect, but it's good enough to understand what the person writing it was trying to say. And this works, again, for all those different languages that, that we showed you before. Um, because Google Apps, you can give it, you can provision it to students, teachers, as well as parents, this can serve as a good way to communicate with parents that are uh, non-English language speakers. Um, another way that this can be used, Gmail, is uh, to, for pen pals. So having global pen pals and the students don't even need to speak the same language, you can have them, um, you can have them uh, write to each other in their native language and then just use um, Translate. Um, I've attached more information on using Gmail um, in, in a webinar in terms of becoming a Gmail ninja uh, right there um, on this presentation. Okay, so the next application that I want to talk about is Talk. And I'm going to go back into my Gmail. One of the nice things about Talk is that you can see right here, you, there's a, you have a presence. So um, you can see who's online and if they're available. So I see my colleague here, Jamie, he's online, but it says that he's, it's red, so he probably doesn't want to be disturbed. Um, let's see if I can find my colleague, Becky um, Evans. I'm going to invite her to chat. Oh, there she is. Okay. So I see that my colleague, Becky, is, is there. So the first thing I want to do is just talk to her. So, hello, Becky. Um, I'm Jeff for the, the sake of this, um, this demo. Um, have you finished the field trip paperwork? So I see right here that Becky's typing. And she says, no. So let's say like, I'm kind of upset about the fact that she has not finished the field trip paperwork. And I want to communicate that. And I can't communicate that just via chat. I, I need to video chat with her to communicate how frustrated I am that she has not finished the, the field trip report. So let's see. Hi, Becky. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> you have not finished the field trip report. I know. I just got so backlogged with assessments and a disciplinary problem. But we can work on the doc together now. Sorry about that. Sounds good. Bye. So that probably would have been a lot more effective if I wasn't smiling <laughs> and if Becky wasn't sitting right next to me. But you could see that there are certain times where you just really need to be able to see the person that you're working with. Um, and using video chat, which is just integrated with your Gmail, can help you do that. Um, you can also use it to invite guest lecturers. So maybe Becky wasn't a teacher here, but she worked at Google. And she, I wanted to invite an engineer or someone that worked at Google into my class when I was doing this unit on science. It's as easy as inviting them through Google Chat. And all they need is a Gmail account, and they'll be able to um, video conference into your classroom. Um, and that's a really neat way that we're seeing it being used. Um, we've actually also seen some teachers use it to invite grandparents into their classrooms for story time or um, relatives from out of town. And it's a really nice way to just uh, widen the walls of the classroom um, in, a, in a very easy way. We're also seeing this being used. Um, as this is actually an example that came from Mayo, Ireland. And they had a record number of snow days. And so they were using Google video chat as well as the, the, the 
normal chat, um, as well as Google Docs, to essentially hold class while, um, while there was snow outside. Um, and this article is funny because it talks about a little student who um, wanted to build igloos as opposed to working on his writing assignment on, in Google Docs. But um, regardless, they were able to continue to hold class even when they didn't, weren't able to go to school. Um, you can imagine using this right before exams, having a teacher set up office hours on, on Google Chat or Google Video um, or through Google Docs. Um, and it's, again, a nice way to extend the school day or extend um, students' learning beyond the walls of the classroom. Um, and more information on using Talk is included right there. Um, the next feature that I want to go to, the next application that I want to go to, is um, Google Sites. And Google Sites is our website creation tool. But it's a really easy, and this is, this is where some teachers get a little nervous about creating a website, but it's really, really easy to do, and you don't need to know HTML. Um, so here's an example of a fifth grade site, and I'll actually take you to that site and show you just how easy it is. So here is Ms. Stevens' site. I actually don't think, I'm going to go back into my docs list. And so she's written some messages to her students. She's in, inserted a calendar, um, and she did, this is, she did this all probably pretty quick. So here we see Ms. Stevens' site. And let's say she wants to change it. She doesn't like that she wrote welcome with that many exclamation points. She wants to delete that. OK, she deleted that picture, too. She didn't like the picture. Um, and uh, she wanted to finish writing this. Please contact the school for more information about the field trip. Um, great, so she edited that. And then as soon as she presses save, it is um, live on her website. So whoever she shared it with, whether she just shared it with her class, whether she just shared it with her school and the domain, or whether she shared it with the whole world, um, as this one is. This one's public on the web. Um, as soon as she presses Save and it goes through, um, then those edits are, are live. And it's just taking a minute to save. But once it's saved, that'll be there. The other thing that she can do is she can insert Let's go to, you can insert a calendar. So the calendar that we were talking about before, we can see she can insert Jeff's calendar. Um, so like that. And just like that, she has the calendar inserted in there. She could also insert a Google Doc if she wanted to maybe publish that fairy tale that she was working on with those third grade students before. She could, um, she could, uh, she could, she could publish it right on her website. Um, and again, it's just as simple as going to edit, to insert document. This has been a little bit slow, but you can insert the document, and it would just show up there as soon as you save it. So another way that uh, Google Sites is being used is for student e-portfolios. This example comes from Clemson University, and they're actually requiring all of their students to keep a digital e-portfolio. So there is a picture of the students. They might have some information on, it might have their resume their professional experience, um, some general information about them. This one has their blog. But it, it, it's a digital portfolio of the student's work. And we're starting to see this become really popular in K-12 as well, where uh, teachers are having students keep all of their work um, in a digital e-portfolio, and then they pass it on to the next teacher the next year. Um, and you can see how the student grew. The students can, can, and they, students can look back at their work and, and see everything that they've done. Another way that we're seeing sites being used is for student projects or reports. So this example was actually taken from the Google, Google Global Science Fair, which is going on right now. And what it, what it used was a Google site to, to do the science project. So instead of the traditional science project, which is done on those cardboard, um, card, on cardboard and then put into the gym, instead the project was done through a Google site, and then it's shared out with the world. So you could create any sort of student report or student project and have it done on Google Sites and then share it out with just the domain, share it out with just the class, or maybe you should even share it out with the whole world and have people comment on it. Um, and lastly, with Google Sites, another way that it's being used is for curriculum sharing. So having, um, having the school or the district use 
uh, use it to share the curriculum for the whole district. And the nice thing is that as an administrator, you can go in and change it and make the needed adjustments that you need to do over the course of the year.